What is up guys, Coding Jesus here. Guys, in today's video, what I'd like to discuss is the courses that you should be taking in university if you'd like to become a quantitative developer. I meet a lot of people through my one-on-one -on -one consulting in real life, online that ask, which courses should I be taking in university if I would like to break into quantitative development? And that's what we're gonna be focusing on in this video. Now, obviously, different schools teach different courses, so this isn't one-to-one -on -one, one -one applicable. But in general, these are the courses you should be looking for in your school's computer science curriculum if you'd like to break into quantitative development. All right, without further ado, I'm gonna be using Harvard's, I guess you can call this like course diagram as an example of which courses you should be taking. Obviously there's a lot of courses and not all of them are relevant for quantitative development and that's why I'm here. I wanna show you guys which courses you should be taking and tell you guys why you should be taking them. Now, these courses are taught by professors that aren't in your school because this is Harvard. So unless you're going to Harvard, you're not speaking to these professors and you're not gonna have exactly these courses, okay? But you will have something, as I mentioned, very similar in your own computer science curriculum at the school you go to. All right, let's start off with the basics. In any computer science program, you're gonna to need to know computer science fundamentals. That's gonna cover basic topics like arrays, variables, stack, heap, maybe a bit of database, maybe a bit of Python, primarily a lot of C, I would assume, that's where they're gonna start you off, uh, HTML, CSS, JavaScript. All that is included in kind of CS50. And the name for CS50 you should be looking for at your school is Computer Science Fundamentals, okay? The next thing you're gonna to wanna to take, and this is probably gonna be obligatory, so it's not gonna be an elective that you can uh, choose not to take, it's gonna be CS51, all right? CS51 focuses on functional programming, object-oriented programming, solid design principles, okay? That's gonna be very important to actually structure your code. So you know how to compile a C program, you know how to you know interact with the Python interpreter and add two numbers, but how do you take that information and merge it into something that's actually gonna be useful for somebody? Okay, once you've kind of gotten through these compulsory courses, now the world is your oyster. Now we decide what courses we should be taking if we wanna make it into quantitative development. I'm gonna be speaking about these courses in the order of, I guess, ascending course number. I'm not gonna really focus on what's a prerequisite to another thing or whether you should take a course in the winter semester or the uh, you know fall semester. That's not important. What I wanna go through is which courses you should be taking and why you should be taking them. I think the next important or next most important after CS50, CS51 is going to be systems programming and machine op uh, organization. Okay. The reason being is here you're going to learn a lot about the fundamentals of how a computer works. You're going to be learning about C, C++, assembly, performance analysis, uh, hopefully some memory management. You're going to be learning about caching, concurrency, threading, synchronization. These are all important fundamental concepts for computer architecture to understand how a computer actually works. There's a very good book to supplement your learning here called Operating Systems, Three Easy Pieces. If you can go through the first two large sections in that book, and it's a very large book, and it's very well written, then you can be a pro at machine organization and you will blow away every interviewer, especially at the junior level. If you know about translation look aside buffers, um, you understand what page tables are, etc., you are you're gonna be golden. All right, the next course I would take, obviously in ascending order of course number, is gonna be data structures and algorithms. All right, data structures and algorithms. In Harvard, they say it's CS124. Sure, whatever that, the equivalent of that is at your school. The reason this is gonna be important, obviously, is because you're, you're going to need to know about different search algorithms, what a priority queue is, what a binary search tree is, what a hash table is, what a stack and a queue is, what a graph is, what a try is, right? These are all gonna be important data structures that you're gonna be interacting with on the job and you're gonna to need to understand the costs and trade-offs of each of these data structures. Not to mention, uh, obviously when you're preparing for interviews, data structures and algorithms is gonna be a key part of that interview preparation. All right, the next course that I would look at is going to be CS141. CS141 is primarily going to be focused on computing hardware. And that's a course that's gonna to talk to you about, once again, hardware, what the CPU looks like, what pipelining is, um, what superscalar design is, instruction set architecture is, uh, they're gonna talk about logic gates, maybe FPGAs, 
Uh, there's going to be a lot there. They're going to talk about non-memory, uh, non-uniform memory architecture, NUMA. They're going to be talking about a lot of various concepts as to how a computer works, but on the hardware side, um, as opposed to per se the software side. Okay. The next course that I would look at, and I really think you should supplement this course with a book called TCP IP Volume 1, okay? And that course is Computer Network, CS143. Here you're going to be learning about TCP IP, hubs, switches, CDNs, Bluetooth. You're going to be learning about IP addresses, Ethernet, um, you know, the OSI model, what the network stack looks like, what's UDP, what's multicast, what's broadcasting, what's network address translations, how, does, how do firewalls work? Right? These are all going to be important concepts you're going to be, need to be familiar with because as a quantitative developer, you're going to be working very heavily with TCP, with UDP. You're going to need to understand different uh, protocols that exchanges might implement, like FIX, simple binary encoding, MDP3. These are all going to be important pieces of information. Hopefully, you have a project where you work with Wireshark or packet capture files. These are all going to be relevant for actual on-the-job skill or on-the-job knowledge that you're going to need to, um, uh, to have. You might not actually necessarily need to have it before you, you know, get on the job, but if you know what these things are, like Wireshark, if you've used it, if you've used uh, network packet dissectors, these are all going to be really impressive things to speak about on your resume, potentially as a pet project or in an interview. Okay. The next course I would look at, once again, in order of ascending a course number here, is CS146. Okay. CS146 all the way up here, you're going to need computer hardware, which makes sense because here you're going to be taking an even deeper dive. You're going to be talking about microprocessors, instruction set design, uh, parallelism, cache coherence, I.O., memory ordering. There's a very good paper. I think it's called Everything a Software Engineer Needs to Know About Memory. It can be very complex, but there's key sections in there that um, I've gone through myself and I've highlighted for my own knowledge that's going to be very important to supplement this course for you. I think you can even read it before you take this course because it's going to give you an introduction to what this course is probably going to be uh, discussing, right? So um, this course, I would say, if it's taught right, it's difficult, but it's rewarding and it's very applicable to quantitative development, especially when you're talking about writing, uh, you know, performance C++ code. Another course that I think you guys should look into if you want to break into quantitative development is compilers. Now, you're probably going to be working with at least one compiled language like C++. Then you might be working with Python or C Sharp or Java. All right, so look into compilers. What's going to be important about compilers is parsing, program analysis, you know, high and low level languages, uh, machine code, language translation, language design, etc. It's going to get you to think about what a compiler is doing, why is it doing it, right? A compiler isn't there just to detect errors. There's a purpose for a compiler, and this course is going to be going, uh, hopefully, into detail as to what that purpose is. Okay, the next course I would look into is operating systems, okay? Operating system CS161 is going to be very, very important. A lot of interviews are going to ask you about operating systems. And they're going to ask you about what is virtual memory? What is physical memory? Um, what's a TLB? What's a segmentation? Internal fragmentation, external fragmentation, uh, base and bounds. They're going to ask you about the CPU, scheduling of threads. They're going to ask you about what a lock is, what a condition variable is, uh, what's a semaphore. They might even talk to you about the file system, like HDD, RAIDs, etc. The file system is a lot less important nowadays, um, but it's still important. And hopefully this operating systems course will go over that with you. If you're really looking to supplement your understanding and take your understanding to the next level, operating systems, three easy pieces, is going to be an amazing book to read. All right. The last relevant course in your undergrad for quantitative development that you definitely want to take is data systems. That focuses on database architecture. Uh, this is CS165, by the way. Database architecture, uh, NoSQL, key value stores, indexing, join, sorting. Uh, maybe they talk about some other forms of databases like GraphQL. And that's going to be very important for you guys to understand. Quantitative development, there's a lot of database work, a lot of data warehousing, data lakes, storing information in either relational databases or non-relational databases, right? When you think of relational databases, you think of MySQL, non-relational databases, Cassandra, MongoDB, 
There's going to be a lot of different sorts of database architecture that you might need to be exposed to. And as long as you understand the difference between, uh, you know, relational databases, non-relational databases, graph-based databases, and you have kind of a working understanding, maybe you've built a pet project, maybe you've in this course done something related to those databases, then I think you're going to be uh, set to take on a lot of the database related challenges in the world of quantitative development. And that's really the end of the video. I decided to keep it short, guys. If you'd like to speak to me about breaking into quantitative development or have any questions about it, I do mock interviews, behavioral, technical. I provide career feedback, resume reviews. I'll link to that in the description box below, guys. I'm also going to link a Google Doc that kind of talks about these courses and what are the key concepts in each one of these courses in the description box below. If you'd like to follow me outside of YouTube, Instagram handle in the description box below as well, guys. Thanks for watching this video. Catch you guys later.